Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. How to make a pomander. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> How to make a pomander, and what is a pomander? I'll talk about that today. What is a pomander? And then uh, the more general topic of family rituals. Family rituals. What is a ritual? Ritual. I've talked about this topic before, but it's a good time, the holiday time. <clears throat> holiday time for, at least for much of the world. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. It's a good time to talk about rituals, family rituals, how to make your family stronger, how to make your family stronger. And family rituals are a great way to strengthen your family, to make your family stronger, to help uh, make the connections, right, between parents, husband, wife, children, closer, stronger together. Okay. And uh, I'm going to talk specifically about a new little ritual that we started uh, just this week with our family, something that I started, and it's called a pomander, making a pomander, and I'll actually teach you how to make a pomander. It's very simple, and I'll tell you what is, what is a pomander. I didn't know what a pomander was until recently, and uh, it's kind of a fun little project. So let's talk about the word ritual. As usual, let's, let's go ahead and look up the official definition of the word ritual. Because sometimes it's good to get the dictionary definition, and then I'll give you the uh, uh, simpler uh, definition using simple words. Ritual. Uh, let's see. Activities performed according to a set sequence. A way of doing something in which the same actions are done in the same way every time. Okay, this this is perfect, okay? So what is a ritual? It's uh, certain actions that we do uh, the same and we repeat them again and again. So, for example, like coffee is part of my morning ritual. Coffee is part of my morning ritual. R I T U A L. R I T U A L. Ritual. It's a nice word. So, something you do that uh, is repeated. So, coffee is part of my morning ritual. It means every morning, right? Like we, we often have an, another word, a similar word is routine. Okay, routine. These two words are similar, but they're not exactly the same. And I'll explain why uh, the difference. Uh, but routine is also something that you do, you know, a routine is something that you do again and again and again. So you could say coffee is part of my morning routine, right? So it means that, you know, every morning we often do the same exact thing, right? We wake up, maybe you get, you kind of have a, a certain things you do every single morning and they're exactly the same, right? Maybe you wake up, like I, for example, my morning routine, I wake up, I drink water first, I drink a couple... Uh, glasses of water, then I'll have a coffee, then, I don't know, I'll brush my teeth, and then I'll play with my kids, right? It's kind of, it's pretty much the same every single morning. That's a routine or a ritual. Now, what's the difference between those two words? And I'm going to give you my, my own definition now of how, why they're different. A ritual is the same idea, something you do that's exactly the same. But rituals often have a religious or spiritual or at least deeper emotional meaning. This is the difference between a routine and a ritual. So routines and rituals, things you repeat. Again, you do the same every time. But a ritual has like kind of a a deeper meaning. So for example... Like every morning, I also I'll put I have a little shrine here in my room, and I'll light some incense, right? And I'll like say like a mantra or something, right? Om Namo Narayanaya, and I'll do that. It's exactly the same every morning. That's a ritual, but it has a deeper meaning, right? 
So it's not just a routine. A routine is maybe like drinking coffee, okay? We like drinking coffee, but is there a deep emotional uh, meaning of, for drinking coffee every morning? For most people, no. Um, but a ritual has a little bit deeper meaning, right? And more, there's more of an emotional or, or spiritual meaning, maybe religious, right? And religions, you, there, many religions have rituals, right? Where uh, they're performing the same actions, but those actions have a, a deeper meaning, right? So that's a ritual. So we talk about family rituals, which is our topic today. Family rituals, what does that mean? Well, it means things you do with your family and you do them exactly the same again and again and again, or almost the same, right? And they have a deeper meaning, right? What they have, there's an emotional part to it. So for example, um, you know, maybe uh, like, oh, just a very simple Halloween in America. Halloween, uh, my family, many families, they go, they buy a pumpkin, they bring the pumpkin home, and then the whole family, the kids and the parents, they'll cut the pumpkin, they take out the stuff from the inside, and then they make like a little face on the pumpkin. They cut it out they put a candle inside and they make a it's called jack-o-lantern right this is a little halloween ritual ritual and it seems very simple but you know by sharing that activity together and doing it every year the same time of year every year it has a it gives a little bit deeper deeper meaning and it's something that brings your family together doing something together shared experience and this can create a stronger feeling of connection, right, in your family. In general, right, like, you know, there are many ways, of course, to, to have close families. We want to have good communication, love, and all of this, of course. Uh, it, also, it often helps, however, to create activities that your, all your family does together. Okay, because when you all do something together, even if you make something together, like the little jack-o'-lantern, right? Or you, maybe you just make cookies, right? This is something else. Like uh, I've started doing, uh, making cookies with my kids sometimes, like Christmas cookies or for birthdays. It's very simple, but they love it. Or making bread with them, right? They love to just help and they're kind of helping to mix it and they, they're laughing and having fun and I'm having fun with them. And, and so we're all doing this together. And these little things of just doing these little projects together really help to make a strong feeling of connection. It's, of course, a lot of times we just spend time together, and that's great, but I highly encourage you to do things together, to make things. Cooking is a great one, like making, uh, cooking different types of food. Get your kids involved and help them. It could just be simple, like making bread sometimes together, making cookies, making a cake, whatever. Or they can help you, as they get older, they can help you make lunch, make dinner, right? But you can uh, also research and try to find maybe new projects. Let your kids help you decide. Let's make something, right? So... When you do these things together, number one, this is a great way to do home education, to focus on projects, right? On actually making something or doing something. That's different than studying, right? Too, too many times uh, we, ha we think that education, that learning is just studying, like memorizing things, right? reading about things and remembering them and then having taking a test and that's what school teaches us that's education but better education much better education is focused on making things and doing things and then you learn you learn from doing you learn from making you learn from doing so for example you could you know you're, you could have your kids read about how to make bread and watch a video about it and they're probably just going to forget it. But if you make bread together, well, then they, of course, they're going to learn how to make it, right? Yes, we can read a cookbook or you can read a blog or, uh, or if you already know, you can teach them how to make bread and, you know, where do we get the flour and the water and the salt and, right? And then here's how we make it. And there's different kinds of breads we can make. And then, but then if you actually do it, they'll never forget it. When you do it, the learning goes deeper. They actually remember more. 
and it's also uh, much stronger for you. It creates a stronger connection. When we sh doing things together, uh, it creates stronger social connection in families, also just with friends, right? Like, like you'll feel a stronger connection if you do anything together with people instead of just sitting around talking or sitting around reading. This is one of the one of the many problems of schools that all of the education is focused on just talk 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 and listen and write you know but there, nothing's really made or done so you can do this uh you know for education reasons but you can also just do it for enjoyment it's the same thing right so let's talk about what i did recently because this is just something i'll just teach you about pomanders today <laughs> what is a pomander i had to first of all i i didn't i never heard of this word before pomander i had no idea what it was Never. So my kids have this, uh, we have this book. It's kind of an old book written back in the 1960s. Not super old, but a little bit old. And uh, it means, what does it mean? Golden apple. Pomander. I think it's French. It comes from French. Golden apple. <laughs> and in this kid's book, we're reading a kid's book, this older kid's book. And in the kid's book on one page, it shows how to make a pomander. And, I said, and it tells you what to do and how to make it. And I, I said, oh, this is kind of cool. What? I never heard of this before. Let's do it. We can make this. Let's do this. This is a good project. And this is a way you can find projects for your kids or rituals. Sometimes you can, you know, of course, there are many religious ritual, rituals. Uh, but you can often just, uh, when you're, as you're learning things, just say, hey, let's do this together. And then, oh, well, we could do this every year now, right? So a pomander. Let me read you. Let me tell you what a pomander is, and then I will um, show you how to make it. Okay, here's a website. There are many. You can find lots of websites that teach about this. How to make pomander balls. Let's talk about what they are. So what is a pomander? So it's this comes from the Middle Ages, so back in the you know 1200s, 1300s Europe. What they would do is they would get an apple or an orange or some kind of fruit and then they would put spices in it and usually cloves. So you push cloves into it. If you're watching on the screen, you can see here's an orange and these little, those little dark things that are on the orange, those are cloves. Right? It's kind of spice, a clove. And you push them into, and into the fruit and you cover the fruit completely. And what is the purpose? Well... The main thing is they smell good. They smell really, really good. So in the Middle Ages, back you know a long time ago, they thought this would, would help to clean the air and help to keep people uh, healthy so that you wouldn't get sick. I I'm, I'm doubt that is true, but who knows? <laughs> but, uh, but in addition to that, it's like almost like incense for your house. It smells really, really good. It'll make your house smell great. And uh, supposedly, we'll see, supposedly you can... Um, make a pomander like with a, a, a orange or an apple and keep it it'll get dry and it'll smell good for many years so that's it very simple so it'll make your house, house smell good basically and people used to wear them around their necks and things uh I don't, <laughs> probably not now but uh in the past they did now i'll show you how to i'll show you the ones we made all right, this first one. All right, so this is the one my kids and I made. We made it a couple days ago. So this is an apple, and it is covered in cloves. It's already starting to dry a little bit. Ooh, the bottom's a little damp, so I'm going to have to hang this. you got to hang them up so they dry out. So the, the bottom's getting a little soft. I'm going to have to... Anyway, so it's an apple, and what I did is we just took cloves, and we just you push them into the apple so they stick, because cloves are kind of long, and they have pointy... So I just pushed them into the apple, and you can see this apple is completely covered in cloves. And it smells fantastic. And so the kind of the juice from the apple will get sucked up by the cloves, and it'll start to smell like cloves, like an apple clove smell. And the whole room will start to smell. And it smells really good. Now what you do next, the next step, which we haven't done, this one's all covered up, but like it's a little wet on the bottom, which is not good because you know, we want it to dry out. So next, what we're going to do today, we're going to buy some ribbon. You get string or ribbon, but ribbon looks pretty. And you wrap it around, and you can tie it, and then you hang it. 
and then you let it dry out, right? And you just hang it somewhere that's kind of uh, uh, not in the sun. You want to keep it away from the sun. And it'll, as it dries out, it'll smell better and better. The smell will get even you know, better and better. It'll smell really good. It already smells good. So that's a pomander. And then there's another one we, did, we have here. Oh, what you can also do if you want to is after you got the cloves, you see this one looks like it's got kind of gold or yellow. What you can do is I put it in a bag and I, uh, I got curry powder, like masala curry powder, like for making curry, right? And, uh, and I put it in the bag and, and then kind of like kind of turned it around. So now it's got the cloves and the apple and it also has the curry powder all. So this one smells like kind of clove curry. <laughs> it smells really good too. Uh, so... You can put cinnamon, and some people do cinnamon. I think cinnamon would be better, actually. The clove, the curry smells okay. I like curry smell, but I think that uh, cinnamon powder would be better, would smell better, probably. So you could uh, get your get an apple or an orange. You could also use like a lemon, I think, a lime, uh, maybe other fruit too. And you push the cloves in one by one. You push them in, right? You gotta push them in all the way deep. They'll all stick, and you cover it up. And then if you want to, you could also put some kind of like powder spice like cinnamon put it in a bag and just kind of gently roll it or shake it and it'll get covered up and that's it very simple so the point of this is of course it's fun to do but if you could do this yourself if you want to but i think it's really great to uh use <coughs> i just smelled that and got curry in my nose <laughs> um oh, um <laughs> I think doing this as a family is it's really fun. Like my kids are three and they had a great time, you know, just pushing the cloves in. Show you if you don't know what a clove is. You probably most people probably know, but you might not know the English for this clove. Let me see if you can see this in the video. Let me look at my video. All right. They're small. Oh wait, I just dropped it. Here we go. That's a good clove right there. Can you uh, let's see if I can get that? There you go. <laughs> curry in my nose okay there you go i think you can kind of see it there with against my forehead see it's kind of long and pointy and there's a pointy end there right i'm pointing to it on the video there's a pointy end kind of a and then it's kind of a little bit long and then on the other end is uh probably what is a dried out flower or clove and what you do is you just take it from this end and in the apple and you push it in the apple all the way push it deep <coughs> ah you push it all the way into the apple. Okay, don't smell the curry powder. <laughs> I got a little too close to the curry powder there. All right, and you push it all the way in, and then, you know, it takes a while, of course. <clears throat> but you got to cover it up completely. The clove will prevent the, uh, the cloves will prevent the apple from getting moldy. <coughs> Ah, I apologize for the sneezing, guys. So you cover it all up, and then it'll gradually dry out. Make sure you hang it up. <coughs> so you want to tie. That's Like I said, that's what we're going to do next, is we're going to tie it up with some string or ribbon. We're going to go buy ribbon, so it looks nice. Some people will put this on their Christmas trees, if you are a Christian, or if you uh, just come from the uh, you know European background, or, or a <coughs> Christian, or whatever, you know culture that has christmas trees you can uh, hang them up as christmas decorations uh but they're not specific to christmas it could be anything and it's really nice so this was really fun and uh, and you can do these little projects with your family and i think it's really great this is uh, a great thing to do because sometimes we wonder like you know how can we create a better relationship with our kids for example right and and you'll get a lot of advice you know people and but it's all about talking 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 which is okay um, but what's better is to do things with them and talk to them while you're doing things. And this will often, if you, as you have shared experiences and you shared projects and you do things together, this will create a closer connection. And of course, this is true for you and your kids, but it's also true for, um, you know, anybody, right? Even friends, right? So it's not just uh, not just talking, right? 
doing things together. Talking is great, but do things together with your kids and try to create a, one, a great way to do this is with rituals means they're repeated. So you're doing these same things again and again, and they, they become more meaningful because in your kid's mind and your mind, these things become part of your family, part of your family culture, right? That, oh, yeah, every year, like I remember every November, we would make pomanders together. <coughs> you know, and I have some memories of my own parents and my own family uh, when I was growing up of things we would do together. Like it's simple things, like every Sunday my dad would barbecue. That seems kind of small, but it became this family ritual. Like every Sunday we would all eat together and dad would be cooking out on the grill. And, you know, so... Uh, those kind of repeated things, you can uh, do things from your own family, things that your parents did with you. You can now do them with your own kids. And you can also just do new things, right? Just find like this pomander is completely new for me. I never heard of it before, but it's so simple and it's fun. So I think that every, every year I'm going to do this with my kids. Like I'm going to add it to our family rituals. And of course, we will celebrate Christmas because uh, it's, uh, you know, Yuletide. I'm not Christian, but but it is also just a part of our family, you know, our heritage, American, Scottish, German. <laughs> um, and uh, you can do this, too. You can create they can be big things and small things. But I encourage you to think of these kind of projects and uh, do them with your kids. Right. Do them with your family. Do them as a family together. All right, let's get... And you can talk to... If you're in the comments, if you're watching live, you can uh, share some of the uh, rituals or things you do with your own family. It could be with maybe you did with, when you were a kid with your parents. Or now, if you already... If you have your own kids now, that you do with your kids. Like, what things do you do together as a family, you know, that you repeat we might have daily rituals, some things that we just do every single day together, and then some rituals that we do maybe every year, like birthdays. Maybe you have specific things you do every time someone in your family has a birthday, right? Or certain holidays or certain religious rituals, whatever. <coughs> you know, like, for example, religious rituals, my uh, my kids help me do incense and little candles on our shrine every uh, almost every day. All right, let's get into the questions. I'm sorry about my nose. It was it was a big mistake for me to smell the <laughs> the curry pomander. I've got curry dust in my nose still. <clears throat> so, yeah, advice: don't do that. Um, Monam says, hi, AJ. Thanks a lot. I've improved my English using your pod, only your podcast. I listen to you almost every day for about three years. You're amazing. Thank you. I'm honey from Morocco. That's awesome. See? Yeah, that's great. Good for you. And that consistency is why you have succeeded. And Malik Sikander says, I'm, I've been listening to your podcast for two years. I'm following their tips and techniques. I can't speak like you, but I can understand 100%. Thanks, AJ. So another great success story. Fantastic. Good for you. <coughs> Seda says, my morning ritual is listening to morning prayers. There you go. Perfect example, right? Perfect example. Listening to morning prayers, right? That's a religious ritual. And I, I encourage you to, yeah, to include this, you know, have some kind of religious uh, ritual or rituals daily. And of course, seasonally, every religion has different <clears throat> rituals that holy days or holy festivals, right? They come up during the year. Those are great. And then also certain things you do every single day, but involve your kids. This is the, the point since our focus today is family rituals. Uh, we have While we have our individual rituals, of course, those are great. But when you can share them with your family, right? Because if you do them as a family, it makes your family stronger, brings you closer together. Do I have an online course? Yes. EffortlessEnglish.com. If you're watching on video, it's on the screen there at the bottom. Effortless English Club. 
com is my website. So go there. All my courses are there. <clears throat> hey, please don't spam the comments with the same comment. I want to study abroad. I don't know which country is better. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Me neither. I don't know which country is the best. Good luck. <laughs> You want to study abroad. I don't know. What What are you studying abroad? What do you want to study? Um, what, why, do, what, why do you want to go abroad? What, what do you want to do? So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. But studying abroad is great. You know, if you can go, go to another country, it's, it's a great learning experience to go to a different country and live for a little while. Uh, it'll open your mind more. It's good. Oh, so Akko says, Akko's Japanese. I believe she's in Tokyo. So, did you see the total eclipse of the moon last night in Osaka? No, my wife was just telling me about it, and I did not see it. <laughs> I missed it. But we saw the moon, though. We saw the full moon before the eclipse. It was a great moon last night, big full moon, kind of orange. Uh, so it was really great. But I didn't know there was going to be an eclipse, so we missed it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Ikkyo says, what's the topic today? The topic is family rituals. So doing things together with your kids and you know, as a family to make your family stronger. These kind of repeated actions that we do. Uh, sometimes we do daily, every day. Sometimes we do every year, annually. Right? Jonathan Kostra says, my ritual every single day is listening to podcasts. When I go to the bus or work, this is a great example of a kind of ritual, right? So exactly, especially, you know, if you're working, uh, working in a job, going to school, you have a certain ritual or routine, depending um, where, you know, you do kind of, like I said, we tend to do the same things, right? You wake up, you have breakfast, maybe you have coffee or tea, <clears throat> get dressed, ride the bus to work, listen to a podcast while you're on the bus. Uh, and then you go to your job, right? So this, I would call, most of these you might call routines if they have no emotional meaning to you. But sometimes they do have some emotional meaning to you, right? Like maybe the podcast is you're listening to things which are very positive and uh, uh, which have meaning for you. So that becomes more of a ritual. And that's the difference between a ritual and a routine. At least in my mind, that's the difference. Roberto Oliveira de Silva says, do you think it's worth it to try to get a job abroad with an intermediate level of English? I'm a software programmer. I want to get better salaries, but I'm not confident yet about my English. Is it? Yeah, try. If you want to do it, just try. Right there. Nothing, no, nothing bad will happen if you just try. If you fail, then if, if you find your English is not quite good enough yet. You know, if the companies want higher level English, then, well, then, you know, you need to focus on learning and practicing and improving more. But who knows? Maybe already you're good enough and you could get a job right now. So try. There's no there's no risk to try getting in a job. That's the great thing. Zero risk. It just takes some time and effort from you to send out letters and resumes, you know, CVs, whatever. But, uh, there's no risk to you, so I think you should try. Yes, you should. Absolutely. If that's what you want, then absolutely. Go ahead and try, and uh, maybe maybe you're already good enough. Cool. Vamsi Mohan says, My name is Vamsi from India. I recently purchased your Power English course. Awesome. I'm looking forward to becoming a powerful speaker in six months and enter into your club membership. Awesome, Vamsi. Good luck. You know, just do it every day, every day, every day. Do those lessons every day and you will improve absolutely. And congratulations for getting Power English. Hamid Aksase, Aksase, sorry about 
pronounce, mispronouncing your name. School does not teach us how to be successful. My kids don't like it very much. So how can I convince them to study? <laughs> Since I know that what they study in school won't help them in their real life. Ah. Uh, well, you know my answer. <laughs> Homeschool. Homeschool. Yeah, right? Like, why convince them to do something you know is not helpful and they know it? So I would say focus on real education. Um, focus, find out what do they, what do they like? What do they, what are they interested in? What are they curious about? And I don't know how old your kids are. If they're older, then what, you know, what are they thinking about for possible jobs or careers or, or interests? If they're younger, then just what are they interested in? And uh, start, just encourage them to learn and to pursue learning rather than studying. Instead of trying to push them, push them, push them to memorize and study stuff for school, instead encourage them to learn, 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 learn real things outside of school. Encourage them that, you know, the best thing you can do is teach them that learning is for all of life and that real learning comes from following what they're interested in and what they're curious about and what they need. So if they say, oh my, you know, school sucks, this is, it's not, it doesn't help me at all, it's not connected to real world, they're right. So, so ask them, well, what do you want to learn in the real world? What do you want to learn how to do? What do you want to learn, you know, to know about? What are you curious about? And you can learn with them, get them excited and focused on something. It could be anything. So I'd say get them excited about learning and don't worry too much about schooling because they're totally different. Cool. Maolin says, I always watch your videos. Today, I'm joining live chat for the first time. I notice I have improved my understanding a lot from your videos. Great. <clears throat> they want to be football players, Hamid says. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> I mean, you, they, you, they can certainly... Um, I see. Right. That is a problem. I get it. Because my guess is they're probably not good enough to be professional football players. Because we all know that that's like 0.01% in the world. Even if they're good to become a top professional player, any sport, not just football. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's not a very... Uh, smart career choice right you know maybe they who knows maybe you'll be lucky and one of them can actually be a football player but the problem is that so many kids get brainwashed by the media they just want to be celebrities i'll be a youtube star i'll be a famous actor i'll be a famous uh you know sports player and you know we all know as adults no probably not <laughs> right so Hmm. That is a hard question. First of all, I'll try to say cut out the TV, cut their TV and cut their even cut their internet use. So you want to you'd, you'd want to cut out and eliminate the the influence of that stuff, that kind of programming. Cuz why do kids want to do that stuff? Right? It's just they're just repeating what they're they're just because it's because the media is showing like, "Oh, look, these people are all rich and famous and awesome." And so you know, these, you know, kids think, oh, I want to be like that. I want to be, you know, the next Messi or Ronaldo or, or whatever. And they have no idea what's required. <laughs> they have no idea how difficult that is and, and uh, how lucky they have to be. So, you know, sometimes you have to you have to do that and then maybe try to trick them and say, well, you know, for example, you know, even if they became football players, maybe you could. Try to get them to learn and study. I mean, really read about and learn and study what happens to professional football players. I don't know, like football meaning soccer, but I'll tell you American football. And this is also true for professional basketball players. So I'm sure it's true in general. What happens to most professional sports uh, players? They become poor and broke, right? 
They have money for a few years. They play for three, four, five, eight years, whatever. And then they they can't play anymore. It's a very short career to be a professional sports, you know, uh, professional athlete. And then what happens is, you know, even if they're making like a million dollars a year for, for, for eight years, that's $8 million. But you know what happens is almost all of them spend all the money and then afterwards they're poor and broke and they have to go get some, you know, crappy job. They have no skills. It's not a, it's, it's a really depressing um, situation. You can find some documentaries about it. Maybe watch them with your kids, right? I think ESPN had a few documentaries about different I can't remember the name anymore but you can find them where videos about where they they actually interview and talk to all these sports guys some of them quite famous some of them that like some famous basketball players that uh that I knew their names and it's really sad what happens to them right most of them don't make 50 million dollars and become Christian Ronaldo okay almost none right so you know, let them understand the reality because it's all the, what this, this idea of becoming a or a famous singer or any of that is a fantasy. And let them understand the reality that even the ones that do become professionals mostly end up poor because they have no idea about money. They have no other skills. They can only play for a short time. And then afterwards, what do they do? So this could be maybe help them start, you know, thinking about even if you want to be a professional football player, soccer player, basketball player, you need other skills. You need to know, you need to understand money and business for sure. Because if they do become professionals, they need to know how to manage their money. And if they don't, if they fail, what are they going to do? They need something else. So that's a good way to do it. I guess give it a try. Okay, I'm just looking at the questions here. Sorry. Hi, Jay. Todd Young is winning Indiana election for the Senate. I don't. I don't know who Todd Young is. I, I'm not. I don't follow Indiana elections at all. <laughs> so I have no idea who that is. <laughs> and uh, I'm not. My family. I have family in Indiana, but I, I've never lived in Indiana. So uh, Indiana politics, I have no idea about. Dio Conan says, I am from Japan. I enjoy English, but my grammar is a little difficult. That's okay. Don't worry about the grammar. Just communicate and talk and enjoy. Do you know Andrew Tate? Nope. AMA asked me. Do you, I don't know who Andrew Tate is either. Yeah, this is very nice. Rubia Schroeder says, My mom is almost 85 years old. She likes to prepare Christmas dinner for the family every year, at the end of the year. It's a kind of ritual. We all enjoy it together. Yeah, this is a great example, right? And these are I have these kind of memories, too, of my own grandmother, of uh, certain holidays, holy day. Holiday means holy day, right? So religious days. And... Uh, where we, you know, have certain meals, right? These are ritual meals. So in the United States, for example, it's a, it's a ritual to have turkey for most families. We don't eat turkey very much <laughs> any other meal. So it's kind of special in that way that this one dish, the turk, you know, uh, uh, like a baked turkey, uh, is is you know made and there's other dishes too. It's not just the turkey. There's other dishes that I remember from my own family. And it's like only Christmas and Thanksgiving, those those two days, those two meals, the special meals we would have, the turkey and some other things. And then and then the rest of the year we never ate that. So it made it kind of special, right? It, there it became a special meaning. And of course the what really made that special is that all of my f extended family, like my mother's side mostly, we all came together. So we all traveled. We visited my grandmother and my grandfather's house, my grandparents' house. And we had this big meal. So I got, I saw my 
my uncles and my aunt and my cousins and my grandparents, right? All together. So for this really large gathering, this large meal, and then this kind of special food. And it really creates a great feeling. And we did it every year. So I have really wonderful memories of this. And also it created a strong connection with my extended family, specifically my mother's family. I mean, that's, I only saw my aunts and my uncles and my grandparents, you know, usually just one time a year at that Christmas time. And only maybe for one week, maybe 10 days, something like that, we would visit. But that was enough because it was, there were so many of these strong rituals and these strong, great memories during those, just those 10 days a year. This, you know, all of us together, we did all these things and we had these rituals and the special meals that it created this strong connection that I still have a strong connection to, you know, my uncle's aunt, aunts, I guess I should say, um, cousins, grandparents, right? Very nice, very nice. So these things can be very powerful, these kind of rituals, very powerful and wonderful. Am I Catholic? No, I'm not. I'm a Sanatana Dharmi. I'm a Vaishnava. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Hamid, good luck with your kids. <laughs> I know that's a tough challenge. <laughs> uh, my kids are too young. I haven't had to deal with that kind of thing yet, so... I don't know if my answer is a good one for you. I honestly, I'm just guessing. Okay, Vamsi says, My son is eight years old. Can I introduce Power the Power English course for him? You could try, especially the mini stories. Uh, you know, maybe the main, the main stories and the commentaries. You could try, but they might be a little too difficult or maybe just boring for him, the topics. But, uh, or he might not understand them. But the mini stories he might like because theirs are kind of funny. So you could try it. I'm not sure. I want him to become a powerful speaker in one year. Um, try Power English. Try them just the mini stories and the point of view stories. <laughs> Power English with your son and see how it goes. How to make pasta, Olsger says. I don't know. I've never made pasta. Good suggestion for a project, though. Maybe I'll try that. I, I should try that because um, my kids love udon, which is a kind of a big fat noodles, Japanese. Kind of like, you know, if you imagine spaghetti, but like really fat and kind of soft, that's udon. And uh, yeah, maybe we could make our own. Usually you just buy the noodles, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, making udon noodles, that could be kind of a fun project. Good suggestion. Thank you. See, you can just see, you can just think of things, anything, right? It, anything. You can just decide. Like a lot of times, your kids will help you with this because they're curious, and they'll just say, "Dad, how how do we do this? How do we do that? How do you make pasta?" For example, you say, "Well, I don't know. Let's learn." And then you go read about it. You say, "Let's let's read and maybe watch a video how to make pasta." And then you say, "Let's try it. We can do it. Let's try it. Let's all do it together." And then it becomes a project with your kids as a family, all doing together. This is, this is the way homeschooling works, actually, uh, also in home education, is that many, many, many times, most of the time, you can start with your kids' questions. Just start with something your kids are curious about, a question they have, and then learn about it, read about it, watch videos about it, and then actually do it. Do something also. Have a project where you're making something, doing something, creating something. Do all of those steps, and then you know they're they're going to learn so many different things. Of course, they're practicing reading because we're, you're we're, you're reading about the topic to learn it, uh, and then they're actually doing it too. So this is this is how you could you could do this with anything, right? Your kid asks you about bugs, you know, ants. Where do ants live? Well, they live under the ground. Oh, how what do they do? And then boom, just start, st just go get a bunch of books, study about ants, and learn about ants. Go outside, start watching them right? And then you could maybe make an ant farm. It's called ant farm. I had one when I was a kid where you actually 
have it in your house and you put the ants in there and they dig and you can see the their little underground thing it's kind of cool that's right this is this is this is the way where it's so much more interesting and fun for the kids it's a deeper level of education you can some of these things can become family rituals you do them you know every year or every week or every month and it makes your family closer because you are learning with your kids this is that this is something that's so important about like home education even if your kids go to school you know but the other days when you're at home with you sometimes we think that to teach our kids we need to be experts about everything that's not true i think uh some of the most powerful home learning home education home schooling happens it's the most powerful is when you learn with your kids you are also learning as an adult you have you don't know about it your kids ask you a question I'll just you say again like something simple like uh uh well let's say about the there's a there's a you know to make there's a question your kids want to make how do you make uh bread dad how do you make bread we just, we just buy it at the store how do we make it and Maybe like I don't cook and I don't know. I say, well, you know, I don't know. I know wheat and flour and stuff, but I don't know exactly. Let's learn about it. Let's learn together. You learn with your kids. You know, get some cookbooks or just look online. It's easy. Something simple like uh, bread is pretty simple. And you all learn it together. And they say, well, let's do it. Let's make it together. And now you're learning with them. And see, and so instead of you just being above them, talking down at them, just say, just talking and they have to listen and memorize like school now it's all you're doing it together you're doing it with them they see you as their partner as their you know you're their your guide you're more of a guide you don't need to be an expert about everything you help them figure it out and you figure it out together and this is real education because this is what they need as they get older they need to know how to learn things independently not just wait for a teacher to tell them and you're showing them by doing it with them. <laughs> Aqua says, professional sports players need to get married with smart partners. They, Yeah, that's yeah, indeed <laughs> what a topic that is. But yes, you're right. James Smith, what kind of books are behind you on your bookshelf? Um... Mostly Sanatana Dharma, philosophy. Um, I've got some junior classics back there, which are great. Those are for my kids later when they can read better. Um, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, the Lives, uh, Plutarch's Lives. So it's about the uh, Roman emperors, two huge books. The Divine Comedy, Marcus Aurelius. Uh, Machiavelli, Machiavelli. Yeah, but I've got more books. These are not all my books. Okay, a few more questions or comments. Uh, do, 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 do. do I play a musical instrument? I do not. I have tried and failed. A few times. <laughs> it's okay to try and fail to you guys. This is interesting. Maulin says, I have a question. Have you read the book, The Little Book of, is it Hig? Hige? The Danish Way to Live by Mek Viking. I have not read that book. Uh, um, part of my family background is Danish. I should read it. <laughs> Danish, German, Scottish. That's my fa my family. Mainly is Scottish. There's some Danish and German in there too. Antonio de Lima says, a ritual has nothing to do with religion. Is that right? Uh, well, it's not only religion. That's the point. Yes, religions, uh, there are may, may, all religions have rituals, right? Because right? there's a deep meaning to what they're doing, right? Like, like for example, in Christianity, you do the sign of the cross, and oh, is it Catholics do that, right? 
uh, I can't, is it, I'm not sure the direction. <laughs> but um, so you can say, well, why that you're, they're just touching their head and they're touching their shoulders, right? But of course, no, that has a meaning, right? That cross has a meaning, a deep meaning, a deep spiritual religious meaning. It's not just some act, it's not just an action. It has, there's a deep meaning to that action, right? So, Yes, I'd say most of these routines in religion are rituals. And probably this, and rituals, you know, I think religion is maybe the closest or the strongest example of rituals. But now this word has a little more general meaning. And we can also talk about rituals that are not religious, but that still have some kind of deeper meaning, right? So like brushing our teeth, is that a ritual? No, not really. There's no meaning. There's no like emotional meaning. There's no spiritual meaning brushing your teeth, right? You're just cleaning your teeth. It's a routine. So this is the difference. So there, I would say nothing to do with religion. No, there, definitely uh, r rituals and religion are very closely connected. But we can also have non-religious rituals. But Neela says, AJ is one of the people that my professor wanted us to give a conference ab about. Interesting. Good luck. Ahasam Kuro Trabelsi Karoi. Sorry about your bad my my bad pronunciation of your name. I have a simple question: Just trans translating things that I am interested in into English, oh, from English to my own language. Can that help? Yeah, I do that for three days. I wonder if it's a good way to improve. Yes, there's a kind of famous uh, po polyglot. You know, guy speaks a lot of languages. That's one of his main things he does is translating back and forth, kind of like what you're talking about. Something he's interested in, and then he'll translate it to his language or maybe even translate it back. His name is, is it Lucas? Lucas? No, not, I was going to say Lepre, but that's a jujitsu fighter. <laughs> um, he's, an, he's Italian. I, I can't remember his name now. Confusing him with um, the jujitsu guy. Okay, Vamsi says, do you have any tips to improve voice and tonality? Interesting question. You have a great voice and tonality which attracts people around you instantly. Yes, because this is something that I did actually train myself to do. So voice and tonality, the quality of your voice, right? And the tone. Because you can actually, you can probably go back and find even on my YouTube channel or certainly my podcast. If you go back to the very beginning, the, the my oldest podcasts. So from back in like 2007 or 8. And you'll hear my voice is different, right? Like I had a higher voice, I'd get I'd get very excited, and my voice would get really high and kind of kind of a weaker and higher uh, voice, right? And I, not, not and uh, you know I realized it at the time; it was a bad habit. Um. So yeah, there's a guy. What's this? Uh, there's a few things you can do. One thing that helped me was actually doing some training for singing. I'm not a good singer, but the training of the training for singing, the tech, some of the techniques also are very good for speaking to improve your voice, right? What does it mean to improve your voice? It means to make your voice more, more, more loose, more open. For a man, it, your voice will tend to get a little bit lower and just a nicer, like he says, a nicer tone, right? A nicer sound to your voice, right? Because what happens is we get nervous or excited. For me, I would get excited. And, uh, and then your throat can get a little tight. And as you get tight, then the, the quality of your voice kind of changes and it gets weaker and it gets, uh, it tends to get higher and it's just not as good a voice, right? This is kind of, when I listen to my old videos and audios, I sound like this. <laughs> maybe, I'm, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but you get the idea, right? So you can train that. They're actually, you can train it. There's something called speech, speech level singing. That's what I did. Speech level singing. And there's a guy named Roger Love. Roger Love, I believe, is his name. Is it Roger? I think so. Roger Love is his name. He he does training for public speakers, and he kind of uses many of the same singing techniques. Roger Love, I'll type it in the comments. 
and uh, it's pretty simple stuff, but it'll teach you to you know, loosen and open up your throat and use more of your chest. You know, in singing, you know, you can sing where you're singing up from the top of your head and it's kind of high like this, but you can also get the sound down more into your chest, right? Lower in your body. And then it sounds, the sound sounds stronger and bigger and lower and deeper. And that's what you want to have a better sounding voice for speaking. Uh, anyway, so speech level singing, I believe is the name of it. Let me look it up really quick. Just speech level singing. I think that's the name. It's a technique for training singing. What is speech? Uh, speech le- yes, speech level singing. Yeah, so you can do a search on that. Speech level singing. Or may, oh, probably other singing techniques would help too. But that one uh, is what I used. Okay. William says, learning English with difficult words about culture, movies, etc. is the best. Is it the best way? Uh, I wouldn't say no. It's only, it's learning English from your interests, from what interests you, what you want to read about, what you want to hear about. That's the best way. If you're interested in culture, then yes, that's great. If you're not interested in culture, then it's going to be boring and it's probably not a very good way to learn English. So I would say it really depends on your interests. What inspired you to follow Sanatana Dharma? I'm from India, Vamsi asks. Uh, well, you know, start off, I was for, for many, 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 many years, uh, I was interested in and in really, you know, was a Buddhist. I was interested in Buddhism and became a Buddhist. But, um, you know, I there was i was always attracted i would say it's the bhagavad gita <laughs> if, if you want a, one answer <laughs> uh and i and uh so i i always felt there's something missing in, in the bhagavad gita i was like this is it the bhagavad gita you know this is i i this is for me this is my religion but i didn't know there was like a whole religion around the bhagavad gita until finally i found uh acharya and his teachings and then, of course, I learned about Prabhupada and Vaishnavism in general. And I realized, ah, this is it. So that's how I came to Sanatana Dharma in a very short <laughs> summary. How are my kids? Asked Fearless Bufendra. They're doing great. They're doing very, very well indeed. It's tons of energy. So I thought, okay, they're, when they're babies, I thought, oh, they got a lot of energy. But now they're three years old. It's like the energy has <laughs> multiplied, exploded. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm a little tired sometimes. <laughs> they just never stop moving, never stop talking. It's uh, it's fun, but a little challenging so. <laughs> <clears throat> sometimes those of you with toddlers know what I'm talking about all right uh, a couple more comments and then time to go Uh, uh, Aisha saying hello from Egypt. Thank you. <laughs> Norbert asked, do you think meditation can help us in learning English? Yeah, maybe. I, if you did a little meditation before listening, before studying, could just clear your mind, you know, clear your mind and help you to, I think the, the, the number one advantage of meditation like, like practically for helping you learn is that it improves your concentration your ability to focus on one thing for a long time and focus deeply. Like meditation will help that tremendously and that can then help you learn other things. So there are other obviously deeper benefits to meditation, but 
or just a practical learning benefits, I'd say that's the number one thing is helps you concentrate because we're so distracted now, right? It's just, you know, videos and cell phones and noise everywhere all the time. So to be able to just sit and focus on a mantra or focus just on a, on your breathing or something and to do that for 30 minutes or longer, this will help you a lot. What do I know about Islam? Um, I, I, I've read a decent amount about, especially Sufi Islam, which I quite like, the teachings. And fasting, which is awesome. The same totally agree with the importance of our oh. Akko says, I totally agree with the importance of our voice. I know Merabian's rule. The rule states that 7%, oh yeah, 7% of meaning is communicated through v spoken word. 38 is from tone of voice, right? And the rest is from your body language. Um, right, exactly. So that uh, much of your communication power, it's not just, it's not the words. That's why, uh, you know, in public speaking, it's not just what you're saying. You know, the difference, you can have two speakers, right? Teach the same content, right? The same, they teach the same knowledge, the same ideas. But one is super powerful and everyone's like, wow, and very persuasive. And the other one is super boring. What's the difference? It's tone. It's how they use their bodies as they speak. It's all these other things. Somewhat how they organize it. Right, how they tell the the stories, right? All these extra things, yeah, exactly right. Felipe Silva says, uh, "Pronunciation the pronunciation course from AJ is definitely the best. After I started to use it, my job meetings have improved a lot." Oh, that's awesome! Good to hear. Congratulations to you! Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, Olga. Hey, Olga. Good to see you. As always, she says it's 5 a.m. in my country. I'm waking up very early. I'm glad to see you at this time. Very good. Uh, is a kiss, can that be considered as a family ritual? Yeah, I think so. You know, like, so, um, this is a good point. Like, uh, different families have different rituals about, uh, you know, like physical affection, right? Like some families, they'll, they'll hug each other. Like they always give a hug when, when, when they arrive or when they wake up in the morning or some give a kiss. Um, and some families like, you know, they're <laughs> like, they're, there's, they almost have none of that. Like there's no, there's not much physical connection, which, which uh, for me is a little sad. I like that physical connection. I think it helps. So yes, it can be little things too. These rituals can be very small little things too. Very, very little. Um, but they have still have a, a meaning there, right? It could be something very simple and small that you do every day or several times a day. It could be things that are, like you said, like, you know, big special meal you do once a year and every, all the family comes. And so it's, it's anything in between those two. All right. Oh, it's over an hour now we've been going. So I'll do like uh, one or two more and then time to go. What kind of camera am I using? I'm using a Canon EOS camera. What time is it in my country? Um... Well, where I live, which is Japan, not my country, but <laughs> where I live, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 a.m. All right, I'll take one more and then time to go. I'm just scanning the comments here for a second. Um, A 
hug from my friend Omar, says Gabrielle. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And just, of course, there's lots of people. People are always saying hello from many places. Iran, Sudan, Brazil. Lots of Brazilians today. Um, okay, I think this is it. Uh, oh, Roberto says, I have a Canon EOS right here. EOS series are very nice. It is, yeah. They're just talking technically. I have a, I, so I use a Canon camera. So the, the Canon, the, 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 most of you probably don't care about this, but anyway, the camera I'm using is really nice. It, the the, the video is super sharp, super clear, really, really, really nice. The problem is that YouTube then often will, uh, the quality on YouTube will not be good, right? So the, the camera quality is fantastic. I have a very fast computer with a great connection. So all of that uh, should produce like a really great video and picture on YouTube in the videos, but sadly, YouTube then will, when it goes through YouTube, YouTube often will make the quality much worse, probably to save, they're trying to save um, streaming, you know, stream bandwidth. So it's sad because I'll, I'll, I'll be looking on my screen and the video looks fantastic, like really sharp and clear and really nice. And then I go watch the video on YouTube and it's, it looks terrible. <laughs> Like, oh, man, this sucks. Well, but I can't control that. That's YouTube's um, doing it. All right, so I think we're about done here. Asiak says, I started to watch your videos three, three months ago. My listening has, skill has improved a lot. Thank you, teacher. Amina, I'll, I'll answer this last question from Amina too. Amina's one of our long time watchers, listeners. Amina says, hi coach. Once I finish the original course, if I want to review, should I review the vocabulary with just phrases or review the whole lesson by listening? It's really either one. It's up to you, whichever you enjoy doing, uh, I would say. So if you, if you, it, Enjoy listening more than the nice thing about listening. Listening is a little easier to do be, when you're outside, right? When you're walking around, you're doing other things. You can have your uh, headphones on and you can just list, be listening and reviewing. Um, if you're sitting down at a table, maybe that's a good time to just review some of the phrases. So you kind of do both depending if you're just sitting and reviewing or if you're more out doing other things. Is The Matrix worth watching? Yeah, The Matrix is a great movie. I love it. All right, guys, that's all. So again, just to review, to summarize, our topic was uh, family rituals. Do things together with your kids. Do things as a family, right? And this will help to strengthen your family. And then I also taught you how to make a pomander. If you want to watch, go back and watch. <laughs> all right. Get my VIP program. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.